What's up, what's up? This is your boy Dwayne again with Black Men Unfiltered. What up, what up, what up? Shout out to everybody that's supporting the channel. Uh, it's just getting started, so and it's not that many subscribers there, but we're gonna work, we're gonna get there, we're gonna get there, we're gonna get there. By the end of October, I'm looking to have at least 2,000, 2,500 subscribers, we're gonna get there. If I get everybody here to support here and then share with others and they support as well. So, right now, if this is your first time watching and somebody didn't share it with you, go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, also, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That's the most important thing so I can bring you guys more content and become the content creator that I, you know, I need to be and stay on track with that. Uh, we're going to talk about some things today that's going to be uh, very relevant as you guys can see the thumbnail already, right? So, let me go ahead and make a few uh, adjustments here. And then we'll go ahead and get started. Just a second. So as you guys can see on the thumbnail, um, I, 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 uh, everybody is rejoicing, right? Like I see a lot of women out of here rejoicing about the, the current things that are happening with R. Kelly, right? Everything that's happening with R. Kelly, they're rejoicing. Oh, everything's good. They finally got him. They're going to put him in jail. You know, I see people making jokes. I see people had an opportunity to, to listen to the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, and they were making jokes. And you can tell that the brat on that show does not agree with everything. And she's not saying anything because she didn't want her popularity to go downhill. And, and so she's kind of scared for her career if she says something. But you can tell in her body language, you can tell in her in her voice that she's not, she did not want to be a part of that. And so, um, and she doesn't really believe it, to be honest. And so, you know, I, I, I like I said again, everybody's rejoicing. Uh, everybody's rejoicing. Everybody's happy. But it's one thing that, that we're forgetting here, guys. Are they, they, they accused R. Kelly of being with 13-year-olds and 14-year-olds and 15-year-olds. And, and they said they had him on tape back in the 90s of him having sex with a 15-year-old girl, a 14-year-old girl. But then they went to the uh, FBI, did forensic work on the videotape and came to the determination that that was not R. Kelly in the video, right? However... How my, my question is this, R. Kelly is going to jail. He's been found guilty, racketeering, sex trafficking, all these different things, right? So he's going to jail. But my question to you guys would be simply this. Mirav. Why aren't the parents going to jail? How is it that you have a daughter? I have three. How is it that you don't know that your 15 year old daughter is at R. Kelly's house on top of him, or he's on top of her. How do you not know that? Because the the, 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 the thing is this, uh, Aaliyah's mama, I saw you in the news talking about, oh, you know, he married my daughter when she was 12 and 13 years old. How can someone come pick up your 12 year old daughter and go marry her without you knowing about it? Can somebody help me? How is it possible that you can Go pick up a 12 year old and go marry her and have a, a complete ceremony with her and get, you know, marriage license with her. And the, and the parents and the relatives don't know about it. Come on, guys. The parents need to be locked up as well. And so basically what happens is this. They, the, the story, the facade that they put up about R. Kelly is this. R. Kelly got these girls his people found these girls and brought them to him r kelly did what he did with them okay so we have three instances here the little girls right the parents and the people why is it that r kelly is the only person going to jail for racketeering why is it if his crew is bringing him the girls why aren't the, why aren't the crew going to jail so basically the system is saying we're going to use r kelly as a as an example we're not going to get the people that that brought the girls in to R. Kelly. We're not going to get the people that found the girls for R. Kelly. We're not going to get the parents that dropped their children off at R. Kelly, R. Kelly's house, his apartment, his studio. If, if I didn't even watch the documentary because I didn't want that to be a, a, a brainwashing thing for me. 
But if, if it was this real, the only way the documentary came forward, if it was not for the documentary, R. Kelly would not be in jail right now. Can you imagine finding a whole bunch of women that's money hungry that want a book deal, a lifetime movie deal? That's also a movie coming up, Surviving R. Kelly Lifetime movie, right? So they're going to have that. They're going to have the book deal, right? And so when they when they get all these, these this money, you know, you can even go online and see some of the girls that he that they accused him of. Oh, he's sla- he's you know slave driving us and he's treating us like a slave. You can actually go online. You can actually go online and see uh, uh, one of the young ladies talking. You can see one of the young ladies talking to the to the crowd, to the news, to the media, and right in the background. You see her daddy telling her what to say, and she's repeating what her daddy is saying. But my question for the daddy is, how do you not know that your daughter is being sexually molested by a grown man? How do you not know that your daughter's not at his house? How do you not know if your 15-year-old, your 14-year-old, your 13-year-old, and your 12-year-old daughter is not at a 30-year-old man's house having sex with him? Or he's like, oh, he's touching her, or oral sex, or anal sex, or any type of sex. How do you not know? These people are selling their daughters to these artists. Y'all, oh, and, and, and if you think, and if, if R. Kelly's guilty of all this stuff, do you think R. Kelly's the only person in the in the industry that has had this fetish? Have you guys ever heard of Pizzagate? Have you ever heard of the, the, the term Pizzagate? I would advise that you go and Google it. Pizzagate covers a, a, a plethora of different things when it comes to child pornography and child... Uh, 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 sex trafficking and things of that nature guys this is ridiculous that R. Kelly is going down by himself the parents should be on trial the people in his in his entourage should be on trial his management team should be on trial the man that came forward and said I was the one that went and got the marriage license for him and Aaliyah okay if that's the case and you testified to that you should be in jail because you are the person that went and got the marriage license you guys should be, all of you should be locked up. All the mamas, all the daddies, because there's no excuse. And I don't even want to hear it. And you black women out here are rejoicing. I'm proud. I'm proud for you. I'm proud that you didn't destroy another black man. But but also, I, I, and, I, and I'm not going to say that. I'm not trying to be insensitive because these things do happen to black women. They, they are raped and they are touched and they are molested at young ages. They are. Right, some cases are real and some cases are not. This is basically we're playing Russian roulette here, because there's no way that you can go back to the '90s and the early 2000s. It sounds like the, the back that ass up single, the nine nine in the 2000s. You're going back 21 years just finding girls that said, "Oh, he touched me," and then you're using this to indict the man and then put, potentially put the man in prison. What are we? What, 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 what are we really saying right now? Where's the current information? But I'm not. I'm, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not. I'm not here for that. Uh, what I'm here is saying that they did what they did to R. Kelly. They're going to make an example out of him. R. Kelly did not have the funds or the means to fight this like he could have if he had the funds or the means. Bill Cosby had the funds or the means. You see where he is. He's at the house in his lazy boy with eight hundred million dollars in his bank account, looking at looking at the TV, smiling, right? Because you have to learn how to discredit these these women. Because uh, because all of them. How can I say these words? Sometimes they're lying. Deshaun Watson, huge quarterback for the Houston Texans. I mean, went back to his local school, uh, uh, donated his first year salary to, to the cafeteria workers that used to serve his food, donated it to them for Christmas, his entire NFL first season, rookie season um, uh, salary, right? Now, all of a sudden, he wants to leave Houston He wants to leave Houston and and, and do his own thing and go to another team because Houston has been known for racist comments and and we're not going to let the prisoners run the the asylum and all this kind of stuff came out of Houston. And Deshaun Jackson, Deshaun Jackson, Deshaun Watson says, I don't want to be a part of this. I'm done. I'm out. I want to out. Trade me. And as soon as he raised that, here comes one woman, two women, three women, four and five women, six women, seven women, eight. Now we're at 19, 20 women that says they gave him massages. And some of the allegations, we gave him massages, he came in, butt naked, laid on the table, and when he got up, his penis grazed my leg, he grazed my hand.
This is the society we're living in today, where where sexual assault is getting a massage nude. It's getting to a point, fellas, that we're going to have to start choosing where we go and who we're around. If you see one woman on the elevator, don't get on the elevator with her. If you see a woman that's fine, don't tell her. You know, just stay to yourself. That's that's the point he's getting to. But anyway, I don't want to get sidetracked. That, that's a sidebar. The parents of the the victims, uh, the 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 accused victims, uh, uh, should be locked up. They should be in jail today. They should be indicted today. Their trials should be coming up. The, there's nobody asking these questions. Nobody is asking. Well, how did these girls get to R. Kelly's house? Were the parents aware? How is it that a 12 year old can leave their parents' house and the parents not know where their child is? How is it that a 13 year old can leave the house and they not know where their child is? How is it that a 14 year old can go to R. Kelly's house and spend a weekend with him and the parents are okay with it? The parents are in on it. How much money they're selling their children and black women. You're out here celebrating the fact that R. Kelly's in jail, right? You're, you're celebrating that he's gonna get time in jail. He's gonna get a prison sentence, right? You're celebrating that. But how about we how about we look at the bigger picture here? The true the, the true criminals, you R. Kelly may be a criminal and, and may be accused of these things and going to jail for these things, but, the, but what about the mamas? What about these black women that that look at their daughters? How scary is that for a black woman to look at her daughter and say, My daughter is so fine and she's so sexy. Let me enhance her. Let me get her a push-up bra. Let me get her a tight pair of uh, jeans. Let me get her a, a, a tube top. Let me get her hair done. Let me get her makeup done. Cause the R. Kelly concert tonight. And I want to be able to put her out front so he can so she can catch his attention. There are girls out here right now that are 13, 14 years old that are built like fucking Serena Williams. And they put tight pants on them, they put makeup on them, they put braids in their head, they put them in, they look like video vixens from the 2000s. They look like the females in the 50 Cent video, the girls in the Tip Drill video. These young girls are not built like they used to be, and a lot of black women will even admit to that. Oh my God, they... The, the, so I, I'm like, why? Whoa! I'm, even my own daughter, I look at her like, oh my god! I don't even want her to leave the house because I, I, I because that not and, and no 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 body shaming. I'm saying she, my daughter is 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 13 years old, and I see her how she's progressing as a young lady, and it's so scary. At her being 13 years old, there's no way her mother or I would be like, hey, listen, Chris Brown in town, hey, hey, go get her a nice dress and put some makeup on her, you know, we want to make sure that she get in that dressing room with Chris Brown tonight, we want to make sure that if Chris Brown take any female to the hotel tonight, it'll be her. These parents are exposing their daughters to the sexual nature, these sexual behaviors, this sexual toxic and toxicity. We talked about this yesterday. I talked about this yesterday on what I posted yesterday. Go on my YouTube page and make sure you guys hit the like button right now. Make sure you guys subscribe to this page. But yesterday I talked about this. How single black mamas are so influential in their son's lives and in their daughter's, daughter's lives. Half of these girls that are that have been touched, half of these girls have been molested. These women are basically selling their child off. There are stories, there are stories from the R. Kelly camp that that actually shows that actually that actually has an interview and shows that there's this black woman uh, that and black father that accused R. Kelly of messing with their 15 year old daughter. R. Kelly bought them a house is what the story is lease them out of house lease one of his properties to them and let them have it and let them stay there year after year once r kelly went to court right because he didn't want the allegations piled up on him once they went to court and they proved that r kelly did not commit the crime r kelly told him get all your shit get out of my house that young lady was one of those 50 women that testified in court against him you, you don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe me as a source. You can go simply Google these things and, and they'll pop right up and it'll shock you. 
we're, we're attacking we're attacking the very nature of things we're attacking oh r kelly did this r kelly did that yes okay fine if he did it oh well i'm not here to i'm not here to be his lawyer i'm not here to be his defender i'm not here to do any of that i am here simply to say that the parents should be locked up the parents should be in jail the parents the uncles the the nieces the anybody the, the his camp anybody that was in r kelly's camp that brought the girls to r kelly should be locked up they should be locked up too. Our kid is going to be in a cell uh, by himself. Nobody's asking. What no Uber back then? How are the 15 year old girls getting to R. Kelly's mansion on the weekend? How are they getting dropped off on Friday and coming back home on Sunday? Not virgins anymore. If that's the case, if that's what happened, are we not going to address it? Are we not going to address it? One more time, are we not going to address it? How are the girls getting into R. Kelly's bed? The, I saw the video, the video from the 90s, way back in the day when I was younger, probably 2001, 2002. I actually saw the video that they said supposedly came out of R. Kelly in the 90s. This 15 year old girl was stroking R. Kelly down like she was 35 years old. And I'm thinking, man, ain't no way that girl 15, no way. But she was there. If that was R. Kelly in the video, which they, the FBI said it wasn't him after face, rec face recognition and going and doing all this forensic work on the video, they decided that it wasn't him and they dropped all charges. But we have to, guys, we have to get to a point. We have to get to a point that we, we fix the situation and the only way to fix the situation is to acknowledge that the situation exists uh, if r kelly played a huge part in sex trafficking then someone has to, r kelly's not driving around the city looking for little girls he's not it's 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 it, that's why they got him for racketeering racketeering is saying that you have a and that's the that's the thing for me racketeering is saying that you have a group of people you have an organization that is doing a crime that's what racketeering is that's what they got him for Racketeering is a person that's create doing a crime, a, a crime with a group of people. It's an organization. That's what. So if he was found guilty of racketeering, that means he has an organization. Why isn't the organization being tried in court like he is? Why is it the moms and dads of these girls being tried in court like he is? I said this a while back on my Facebook page. I said that if R. R Kelly does not need to go to, if the parents don't go to jail, R. Kelly does not need to go to jail. They're all in cahoots. And if you guys think for one minute that, like I said again earlier, if you think for one minute that 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 R. Kelly's in this by himself, if he's guilty of these things, if if, if you think for one minute that he's the only person that. <laughs> He's the only person that's out here doing this. It could be your doctor when he put, when you go get your mammogram, when you go get your your woman your women's checkup. It could be your doctor. It could be your dentist that when he puts you to sleep to do an oral exam, he's playing with you. He's touching you, grabbing your breast. You'll never know it. We're talking about a superstar, an R and B king of R and B, and it and you. But but and another thing that we're not addressing, we're not addressing your uncles, we're not addressing your aunties. We're not addressing your daddy. We're not addressing your 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 your, niece, your nephew. We're not addressing the other people that are closest to us. We're celebrating R. Kelly, but this thing goes deeper than R than, than Kells. We're, we're, we're not talking about it. We're not we're not talking about it from another aspect. Everybody's sharing pages and, and sharing how funny it is and putting up different jokes and, and cracking jokes about oh R. Kelly's in jail. But wait a minute. The influences of the behavior are walking the streets. How scary is that? So you think they're just going to stop trafficking girls just because R. Kelly went down? Who's the, who are they going to be trafficking girls for now? Who are they going to go find girls for now? The parents. Who are you going to sell your daughters to now, you low down bastards? Who are you going to take your 15? See, this is the, the most scary thing is this. Because Life Jennings, and I may add that to this video. I may, may, I may let that be the last part of this video so you guys can see the interview with Life. Life Jennings spoke on the matter. Life Jennings said on the matter, he said that he's been to, he was on the road with R. Kelly. And they used to go on tour together. 
And he said R. Kelly had no problem uh, getting women his own age. He said they would be lined up, lined up, lined up. But then, like Jennings also said in the interview, that if he said he never saw little girls, but if the little he said, but he did see parents uh, and heard rumors of parents bringing their little girl, fourteen and fifteen little fifteen year old girls, to the show and put and and, and sneaking them into his and, and into his dressing room, into the green room, into the closet, into the bus. Can you imagine? Think about that. Going to your daughter, ladies, listen to this, the, the decent women out there, the decent black women out there. Can you imagine going to your daughter and you're so desperate for the spotlight, so desperate for black males, so desperate to break a black man, so desperate to take a man's uh, 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 trauma that he experienced himself? Because R. Kelly was raped too. That's just not, we don't know, but that's a deeper conversation for another day. He's raped by his uncle and his aunt, Jesus Christ, according to his family members. However, we're not going to talk about that because we don't want to talk about what gets what got him to the point where he is. But we, but we don't want to talk about that. That's another video for another day. What I'm saying to you is if we know, if you know, if I know that there's a rumor that in the 90s, uh, Aaliyah, 12, God rest her soul, was 12 years old with this guy. And the rumors all around the streets and everybody's talking about it. Everybody knows about it. The industry knows about it. The people know about it. The parents know about it. And they know, oh, he like little girls. Oh, baby girl, come here. What you doing tonight? Nothing. Hey, listen, mama bought you a dress. Mama bought you a nice pair of jeans. You like those heels? Mama gonna let mama do your makeup for you tonight. We're going to the R. Kelly concert. After the concert, hey, listen, I'm gonna get you back there. You want to meet him? Yeah, mama, I want to meet him. Okay, listen, you're gonna go back there and meet him. And you're gonna do whatever he say after if he if you make him choose you and whatever he say do you do it okay no matter what you'll get through it it may be painful at first or he may want to just kiss on you or something but you do that because if you do that we can get some money we could get some money if you do that we could get some money you're selling your daughters black women selling your daughters in some cases these some of these girls have mama and daddy on board mama and daddy feeding their daughters to r kelly but they're not in standing in front of the judge and it's not even considered r kelly's camp is not considered and then we sit on tv and surviving r kelly and sparkles up there talking about which she's also fucked r kelly let's just be real she's talking and there's so many witnesses to that Right, and she felt like R. Kelly did her wrong, so why wouldn't she make up something? R. Kelly had sex with my 15 year old niece, she was at his house for the weekend. Well, where were you, Sparkle? Where were you when your 15 year old daughter was booting up for R. Kelly? That's like you said, where were you? That, that's what makes it so unbelievable that women that these women are coming forward. What kind of bug? I'm gonna kill it. Anyway, the women that are coming forward, where were you? Where, where, where were your moms when you say you're 13 and you're 12 and you're 15 and you're 13 and you're 11? Where were you when your daughter was getting naked for a grown man? <laughs> you are a part of it. You fed your daughter. He was the lion. Let's be honest. Let's let's. Dig. I, I didn't want to do it, but I'm gonna do it. I said in my last video. That Ayanla said, as a, from a from a clinical uh, from a clinician standpoint, that whatever trauma happens to any person in the world, whatever age that trauma happens, I'm sick of this bug, y'all. I'm sorry. I, I I don't know. I'm gonna give my name in a minute. But it, she said, whatever the trauma, the age the trauma happens is where your mind stays. Your body continues to grow, but your mind stays at that age of your trauma, and so you start to get into that trauma. You start to become a part of that trauma. Right? And so you start to say, hey, listen, you are 13 years old and you had sexual trauma to your life. You were raped at 13 years old or 12 years old. And your mind stays there. And so look at the age of the girls that if this, these, these things are true, look at the ages of the girls that R. Kelly was supposedly uh, molesting or supposedly having sex with. The same age he was when he was raped. I'm not justifying anything. I'm talking about what Ayanla said because she's Ayanla Van Zant said she's talking from a clinician point of view. It's not going to be sexy, but she says she's going to tell it like it is. And so if R. Kelly has this thing and R. Kelly is going, if, if R. Kelly has this situation, 
and he's mentally d- d- screwed up in his head some type of way about about these little girls then somebody knows about it in his camp he likes little girls let's give it to him we spending all his money anyway he can't read right everybody knows that r kelly couldn't read r kelly had a horrible life growing up he was illiterate so you knew he didn't know anything about counting his keeping his money or, or, or having an account of his money so they probably stole all his money right uh and so that, that but, but like i said i'm not here to justify anything i'm giving the facts so these little girls end up at r kelly's house the judge is not asking if i were a judge i'm not a judge but i'm smart enough to to to, to ask the questions wait a minute excuse me can we hold this case up for a second Mr. Kelly, or young lady, bring her to the bench, please. Put her on the bench. May I ask you a question, young lady? You're accusing R. Kelly of these things. Is that correct? Yes. And these things happened when you were 12. Yes. And how old are you now? 27. Great. May I ask you a question? When you were 12, did R. Kelly have his kids at the house when you were over there? Were they the same age as you? Or were you dropped off at R. Kelly's house alone? with nobody there with him call the parents to the to the to the to to, to the stand mom and dad when did you when did, at, at what point did you feel like it was okay to drop your 12 year old daughter off at a grown man's house that had no kids there what was the motive what 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 what, what were you trying to accomplish Oh, you wanted your daughter to have a deal or a singing deal? You thought your daughter was talented? If that's the case, then why not stay with your daughter if you care? No, 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 no. You heard. Somebody from the crew said, hey, you like little girls. Your little girl, you know, she fit the uh, you know, she fit the criteria, but he, what he may like. Oh, let me let, dress her up. Let me give her the, you know how you women do today. Even to this day, we're growing our daughters up too fast, right? Right? They're 12, 13 years old. Got on these tight pants, fitted pants, curves, breasts are bigger than they've ever been before. These girls are growing at an accelerated rate because of processed foods. And that's another another time, another conversation. But the hormone levels of these girls are growing up. And so and when they're 12 and 13 years old, they have breasts, huge breasts, thin waist, huge butts, right? They're walking. They have hips. They have thighs. They, they're they walking. They look, they, they're starting to be built like 30-year-old women. You can't tell the difference. Now, imagine taking that 13-year-old girl and throwing makeup on her and putting uh putting weave in her hair and down her back and putting lipstick on her right and putting her on a tight fitted dress and no nobody's going to come up to you and card her and say how old is she is she legal but you would take your daughter i i, I can't get over this you would take your daughter that you had that you pushed out and went through nine months of, uh, uh, of of caring, you would let her get to an age of 13 or 12 and see how her body has matured. You would take her and dress her, put makeup on her, and take her and feed her to the man. The scary thing is, is that R. Kelly is behind bars. But are, are the girls more sick? Are the girls more sick? Are the girls more devastated by R. Kelly touching them? Or their mama giving them away because r kelly is going to go to jail we all know he's going to go to jail they're going to make a huge example out of r kelly right but what's going to happen let's talk about that what's going to happen to the girls long term are the man that touched me he's in prison but the woman that's sold me is in the next room the woman that sold me is at my wedding sitting on the front row the, the 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 man and the woman that sold me or gave me away to this man for financial gain are the ones that's hugging my my children that, that, are, are, are we really not going to address that are we really not going to address that are we going to act like the parents had nothing to do with this? We're going to act like the parents had no financial gain from, from selling their daughters and giving their daughters away? See, this is a passionate thing for me because I have three beautiful daughters. And there's no way in hell I'm not even going to take my daughters to their uncle house for three days and leave them by themselves. So why is it that if R. Kelly was a, just a, a regular Joe, 
no money, no talent, working at the working that family dollar. Would you drop them off at the house with him for the weekend? No, it's for financial gain. You saw something. You saw R. Kelly at the top of his game. R. Kelly has been at the top of his game for almost three decades. R. Kelly has written for so many people. Now these people turn their backs on him. R. Kelly has written for Michael Jackson. Stranger in Moscow, written by R. Kelly. Uh, B2K, 90% of their songs was written by R. Kelly. B2K got their own issues of being molested. But we ain't gonna talk about that because the man that molested them and had them giving him head, he's right there. He's not in jail. Right, the black women are celebrating R. Kelly, but we're not. We're 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 not talking about the women that have molested men. Jada Pinkett Smith talked to one of the guys from the Crisscross Rap Group. He was 13, 13 years old. She was 22. It is a proven. It is a fact. So many people in the in, so many people in the industry said that Jada Pinkett Smith used to just get these young boys when she's in her 20s on the set of a different world, talking to 12 year old boys, 13 year old boys, kissing them in the mouth, having sex with them. But she's got the red table talking. You black women are supporting her every day. Girl, you seen red table talk? You seen red table talk? She didn't shave her head. She said she didn't went through a lot. Yes, she has. And, and and she may be dealing with some pain from the past too. Her mom was a crackhead. How many times did Jada was left in the house with men that came over to pay her mama for sex so her mama can go and buy dope, right? She had her experiences with Tupac, right? I'm not saying that she didn't go through a traumatic experience either. However, we're not looking at these things the same way. Jada has sex with a 13 year old kid when she was in her 20s. This is fact. You don't have to believe me. Like I always say, Google it. Even now, August Asina, oh, she gave him a nickname, Aug. August Asina was the best friend of her son. How is it that my daughter come over here with her friend? My daughter's 18, she come over here with her friend. And her and her friend come over and I, and I happen to look at her friend and be like, I'm gonna hit that. And I go and my daughter finds out I've been banging her friend up. That What kind of problems would that cause? Especially if you're married. Now you got to tell your wife, I had sex with my, my daughter's friend. My daughter's friend got to deal with it, right? And then I'm then you know that she had sex with him. Just She said it. Oh, I just uh, I needed something different. You knew you weren't going to be with him. You knew you were going to run back to Will because your career was on the down spiral and, 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 and Will Smith's career was on the up. Up in the up, up, up in the up in the rafters, right? Everything Will Smith touched in the '90s and the 2000s up until today, turning to go. We had a few sorry trash movies, but man, listen, the boy made millions and hundreds of millions of dollars in the movies. He's a great actor, right? She's not going. August knew that she 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 was not going to leave Will for you. She used you as a sex toy, and you were key. She was knowing you since you were a baby. But the black women are not up in arms about that. They're not even talking about it. They don't even want to discuss it. As long as we got R. Kelly, we ain't worry about what the women do. What, what about what women do? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if Jada did that. It doesn't matter if these, these women have done this to these men, just like men have done it to the women. That don't matter. All, we, all that matters is we want to make sure the most powerful black men, we take them out and we take them out quick. But I'll say this, for some from a clinician standpoint, Cause I'm not one, but I'll make a suggestion. Some people don't need to be in prison. Some need to, some people need to, to get the help that they need. Because on my on one of my videos, I spoke about that a generational curses, how things are passed down and passed down and passed down, and black people have been conditioned to not get help mentally. R. Kelly, if he's this monster, then the monster needs to go see someone to help him mentally. Putting R. Kelly in jail for 20 years and help is helping him how. You want, did you want to incarcerate him to make an example or did you want to incarcerate him to help him mentally? Is there an agenda just to put him behind bars and make him that? Because hard, because see, the thing is this, all these women out here, all these reporters, all these journalists out here, Oprah and what's her friend's name? The one that like a poodle in the face, Gail King. And they get on the air and they're asking all these questions and they're just destroying black men. Or, uh, uh, even Kobe Bryant. Even Kobe Bryant wasn't dead a day. And she got on TV saying, do you remember what the rape allegations against Kobe Bryant back in 2001? I mean, girl, it was, what, what are you talking about? It was 19 years ago. Why are you even bringing that up? And the man, ain't even, the man not even cold yet. Right? That's Gayle King. Her and Oprah. Let's kill all the black men. Then, 
Oh, let's make something about Russell Simmons. You see what Russell 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 was Russell was very smart man. When those allegations came for Russell, Russell sold everything in America and he moved to a country of no extradition. What R. Kelly should have done the same thing. Because come one, come all. They was looking for Russell. Oh, we got a warrant for you. Oh, you don't. Russell then moved to a country no extradition. You're not going over again, Russell. Russell, he's going to live there for the rest of his life. So ain't nothing you can do about it but just deal with it. And Oprah had a whole show, a documentary about Russell, about about Russell, and 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 how Russell was messing with women and how Russell was molesting people or, or sexual harassing women, right? But then she had an art then Gail King poodle face did an interview with Art Kelly and embarrassed him. He went viral. They didn't make jokes about it and videos about it. It's crazy, right? But then Gail King, I didn't see Oprah and Gail King when 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 their friend uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein got caught up in all his mess. They had to put him in jail though, right? They had to put him in jail because they didn't want what I'm about to say. <laughs> He's been doing it for years and years and years and years and now it came to the light. Not one interview, not one word from Oprah, not one word from Gail, not one word from all you black women out here that's been screaming, I'm not listening to I'm not listening to R. Kelly's music no more. But you'll go to the movie theater and watch Fast and the Furious made by New Line Cinema, which is owned by the Weinstein family. <laughs> you'll go and watch those movies, right? Right, you'll go watch the the Marvel movies. You'll go watch the Love movies. You'll go watch uh, Color Purple. You'll go watch all these movies that were done by men that have have claims against them that they were sexual harassing or sexually or sexually assaulting a woman. Right? How is it that how is it that Harvey Weinstein can own New Line Cinema and be a part of the board of New Line Cinema, the same company that made Friday, Friday after next, next Friday, right? The same company that made. Money Talks, same company that did all these BAPs and all these different movies, black movies that people like Harvey Weinstein was behind it all. And But you watch New Line Cinema, but you, you say you're not going to listen to R. Kelly anymore. You're going to watch Friday again when you see it on TV? You're gonna watch. You're gonna watch these uh, Marvel movies. You're gonna watch these 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 love movies. You're gonna watch these these stories on TV. You're gonna watch these movies made by New Line Cinema and Warner Brothers and all these other uh, places that Harvey Weinstein had his uh, Harvey Weinstein had his mind on. You, 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 that's what you're gonna do. Are you gonna continue to, to watch those movies because that's a part of it? At the end of the day, I'm still gonna to listen to R. Kelly's music because R. Kelly's the king of R&B and nobody did it better. R. Kelly did 30 years of his career, 30, and 30 years of his career, 30, and he and he was the king of R&B, 30 years. So it just not listening. So uh, uh, D.L. Hughley made it clear. Me and D.L. Hughley's been bumping heads lately because D.L. Hughley has really did. The, he's really been changed a little bit since this COVID thing that happened. But it's one thing I agree with him on, which I agree with him on a lot of things. I just disagree with him on a few things he's been doing lately. But uh, he had a, he had somebody asked him, "Are you still going to listen to R. Kelly's music?" He said, "Hell yeah!" They said, "Why would you do that? Why would you listen to that monster's music?" He said, "This I'm going to listen to it." Don't y'all still sing the Star, the Star Spangled Banner after all America did to black people? And some of you black people out there are still going to listen to the Star Spangled Banner, right? You're still going to stand and put your hand over your chest when knowing that song was meant not for you, not for me, but was for the, 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 the oppression of your people and the death of your people. And in that song, in the third stanza of the song, that they, just because they took it out doesn't mean it did not exist. It's in there by burying slaves in a wet grave because they're helping the British fight for their freedom. Come here, come here, somebody. But you're going to still stand up and put your hand over your chest? So don't come to me and telling me nothing about R. Kelly when you're not talking about... And then uh, that's another thing. Are we going after the families that have these huge billion dollar corporations that was made on the back of slaves? How many of you have your insurance with New York Life? Life insurance, right? Did you know New York Life, life insurance has been around since the 1700s and they, and they insured slaves for the white man? And if they lost a slave or hung a slave or the slave was disobedient, they beat the slave to death or put a noose around the slave's neck. Do you know that the insurance company will write the check to the slave owner for New York life? Huh? Did you know Chase? Huh? Did you know what? No, did you know about Chase Bank? <laughs> Guys, I could, that's a whole nother video. 
All I'm saying is that we have to be very mindful of what we do and what we say about what's going on today. Because R. Kelly is the person today, but we're, but we're not we're not going after the families. See, we talk about R. Kelly molested girls and he touched little girls, but are we going after the all the white families that have a history that their great grandfather and their great great grandfather? Since we're going back in time, let's get on it. Let's get into let's get in the molesting time machine. Let's go back and, and all those families that have millions of dollars off the backs of black people and slaves, and we were not paid reparations and made trillions of dollars worth of work. How about this? How about we go and find those families and break them? How about we go and find those families and take all their money because their great great grandfather sold your grandmother? And and not only did they sell your grandmother, your grandmother had a baby at the time, and they took that four month old baby and sold that four month old baby to another family, and your grandmother never seen that baby again. Imagine the trauma from that. Can you imagine husbands being tied up and 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 having to watch the slave master? And the overseer have sex with his black wife that he's married to and have children with laid over in the field getting, getting just getting driven by white men having sex with her. Are we looking for the bloodlines of those families and those families who have made money off of their great great grandfathers who molested and raped and sold and battered and beat and raped and sold and battered black women for years and hundreds of years? No, we rejoice one arrest and one indictment, one one person going to jail, but ain't none of you doing the research to try to take down those families. Like that, that I, I don't like to be a comedian at times, but I'm about to be one. This Scooby Doo face leader of the Me Too movement, are you going to go back in time and rip the families apart of those white people that own slaves and has sex with their black girls at 13, 12 years old, raping them, ripping them open? Some of them, I've read Christopher Columbus. If you get a chance to read his diaries, and he talked about how black men, I mean, how black women could sustain pain, how they can deal with pain, and some of the girls that were six or seven years old couldn't make it after they had sex because they would bleed to death. They were so injured. So don't have sex. If you have a choice, have sex with the 12 year olds. They can handle more pain and more sexual intercourse. The six year olds, some of them die afterwards. Given instructions on how to molest and how to destroy black girls and black women. But we're rejoicing on one arrest and one indictment, one guilty verdict. But how many? But I want the Me Too movement, the lady that runs the Me Too movement. I want her to get her friends together and I want her to go find all the people, the families, the bloodlines of those who have, have lost children, who have been separated from their children and raped in front of their husbands. Matter of fact, go find the men that raped the men as well and sodomized the men, call it buck breaking, where they used to tie the men to a tree and the overseer would come and, and, and take his penis and put his penis in the man and have sex with the man in front of his wife and children to break him as a man. Are we going to go find those people? See, nobody, see, somebody's going to watch the video and say, man, he always bringing up that. No, 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 no. It's important because you went back 21 years on R. Kelly. You went back 40 years on Bill Cosby. Let's go back 200 years and find the bloodline and the families of these people and destroy them just like you destroyed, tried to destroy Bill and then destroyed R. Kelly as well. Because R. Kelly may have done this and he has a problem. But let's not stop with R. Kelly. If we're going to go back 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, let's go back and, and talk to the white men that used to stay across the street from your grandmother and raped your grandmother. You got that yellow skinned cousin. But your grandmother never said anything and he's right across the street with his wife and kids. You got, you got that little mixed colored girl in the house and everybody else in the house, the color of me, but she's the color uh, uh, of a yellow crayon. And you're trying to figure out why she yellow skin and anybody else ain't. And your daddy in the room crying at night because he can't nothing he can do because the white man across the street has control over his wife and the black man's wife. If we're going to go back, let's retroactive and go back and take care of these families and then take the money that they made off the black women and that they enslaved and raped and murdered and beat and slammed. How about we take them and take their money and then take that money and find the families that lost loved ones in, sla in slavery and then take that as a, as, 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 as a uh, reward as reparations and take that money from these billion dollar corporations like Chase and New York Life and all these other companies, Wells Fargo, that dealt with insuring slaves and raped girls that died. New York Life used to even pay out checks for little girls that died from sexual intercourse at young ages. They would pay the insurance claim out because the, 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 the slaves were under the insurance policy. Are we going to go take New York Life down for, for paying out checks from white men who raped little black girls and they died and they lost their property and they wrote a check because the little girl was insured with the insurance company? This has been Black Men Unfiltered.
Hey, this is real talk. I will always keep it real here. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Share this video. I appreciate each and every last one of you. And thank you for giving me your time today. Y'all have a blessed day. Again, this is Black Man Unfiltered. If you want to hear me, I'm a part of the Fuse Radio family. So you go to FuseRadio.com or you can go to get the Fuse Radio app. I will be on the podcast every Monday at 6 p.m. on that station. And I'll be giving you content every other day here or when things arise like they have this week. You guys have a wonderful day. I love each and every one of you. Peace. That is my baby daddy playing in the background. What y'all about? Mm. Turn right to I-285 South. Questions you have passed my test. Happy people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Turn it. Yes, them who people. Happy people. Come on, baby daddy. Other baby daddy. Dancing. So guys, I had to come back. So, ain't this the same female that said R. Kelly did this? It take us through the, the moment that you walked away. What was that day like? That day, I just remember playing sick all day. And I went and I got in the bed. And I was like, okay, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? And something just said, end it. That was my first answer, end it. And I remember going out on the balcony. We were at the Wyndham Grand Bay Hotel. I'll never forget it, Coconut Grove. And I actually climbed up on the balcony. And I had one foot propped against the wall. And my other foot I climbed up on the ledge. And I remember looking down. And it's almost like God was able to let me see in the future. And I saw my body laying in blood and I saw the ambulance come and I saw the housekeeping come out and they were pointing up and they said she jumped from up there. And then I remember my baby's voice in the background going, mama, mama, why did mama jump? Why did mama leave us? And I remember jumping down and I said, okay, God, you have to give me an answer today. What do you want me to do if this is not for me and you want me to leave? What do you want me to do? God, I need an answer today, not tomorrow, not in an hour. I need it now. And the first thing God told me, he said, grab your laptop. And I'm like, oh, God, you tripping a laptop. Are you serious? And once I grabbed the laptop, he said, put in domestic violence. And I'm thinking to myself, but I'm not that girl. I'm not. I'm not the teeth missing. I'm not the broken bone, girl. And God said, keep scrolling. So I kept scrolling, kept scrolling. And at the end of Domestic Violence Awareness website, there was a questionnaire. And there were 17 questions. And they asked you, has your abuser ever done? And of the 17, Robert had done 15 to me. Oh, my God.